welcome to this uh, presentation on the application of machine learning to optimize learning analytics. Uh, my name is Ikechuku Oguchi. I'm a master's student at GMIT in, under the School of Science and Computing. And uh, my supervisors are Dr. Koma Kigli, who is also a lecturer at the School of Science and Computing, and Dr. Ikin Kelly, who is also a lecturer at GMIT as well. Um, before I begin this presentation, I would like to acknowledge the wonderful people who have been um, behind the learning analy analytics work at GMIT. The project has been in development since um, 2015, and I'm just joining in as a research student on this project to contribute to the uh, machine learning side of the project as well. So um, thanks to COVID, we are not part of the full picture myself and Mark here, but on the right hand side, you can see um, the people who have been working on this project since 2015 to date. And they include Dr. Ethan Kelly, Dr. Koma Quigley, Gary Jordan, Matteo, Donald Maginti, Fiona Dohan, who are all um, computing staff, and myself, who is a research, research scholar joining this project. So a little bit on the background of the project. This project has been in development since 2015. And DAX expressions, which um, refer to data analysis expressions, has been previously applied to the learning analytics project, which um, we are doing. And we've been using um, software tools like um, Power BI to analyze students' data. And using DAX expressions, uh, we are able to um, try to optimize the learning analytics of, student, of students. The limitations of the DAX method is what prompted the need for us to explore the use of uh, machine learning as a tool to optimize what we are doing on this project. And part of those um, limitations include that the DAX expressions, which simply refer to like a set of codes or instructions um, on a spreadsheet to classify a student being at risk or not at risk based on a certain threshold, is has the limitation of not being able to put into consideration the seasonality of data. And what I mean by that is that in some cases, it predicts students who are on holidays as being at risk. But if it takes into consideration the entire um, student data, it would be able to understand that there are periods in the uh, sessions where students are not expected to engage much with the content. But because the previous method is based on using this um, expressions um, method, it's not able to put the seasonality into consideration. And also, it's not also able to um, put into consideration the fact that there are some courses that students take which do not require so much engagement on their um, student learning platform. So these limitations are what prompted the need for us to explore machine learning. And um, the goals for this project include to refine the earlier work which has been done, explore the predictive um, power of machine learning models, and also to validate them against past results. Um, this slide shows the dashboard of what the previous work which has been done um, looks like. We have been able to successfully um, pull real-time data through an API for the previous dashboard. And the DAX expressions run on this real-time data, which is pulled from the API to actually show us the number of students which are at risk and show the um, classes which the students belong to. And is also able to um, show us this information by the department. So that brings us to um, machine learning, applying the machine learning to this project. So before I comments on how we are doing that, I would like to briefly explain what machine learning is. So machine learning can simply be defined as a set of techniques, which gives computers the ability to learn from data without being explicitly programmed. And what does that mean? It simply means that you do not have to um, write um, codes for each um, set of data points. For, for example, for a given student, you do not need to um, specify like that when the student meets up with a certain criteria that you should classify them as risk at, as being at risk. Rather, what um, 
the use of machine learning does is that it takes the large amounts of data. There's so much data which we've been able to capture on for the students. It takes, sorry, go comment at the end. Um, the, it takes into consideration this data which is coming in from this platform. It's, um, this data is being fed into an algorithm and this algorithm, where does it go coming? This, this algorithm is, what now um, learns from that data and is able to um, predict or make predictions on. I'm sorry about that. There's a spam call coming in. It's kind of interrupting me. So um, lots of data is being fed into an algorithm and it improves the accuracy of the model incrementally. So machine learning works with large amounts of data. And machine learning is able to look at this vast amount of data and see patterns which um, humans ordinarily wouldn't be able to see because the data is so fast. We are talking of um, gigabytes of data here. So there are two major tasks which machine learning helps us to do. Um, one of them is the classification task, which is um, giving the computer the ability to say, okay, this is an image of a human being or this is an image of something else. So that is the classification task. And there's another task machine learning helps us to do, which we are more concerned about in the learning analytics. And that is the prediction task, which is where the, the computer is able to tell which student is at risk or which student is not at risk. Or for a case of the stock market, you can predict if the stocks are going to rise or fall. So those are the two major tasks which machine learning is used for. And the two types of machine learning which are commonly in use are the supervised and the unsupervised learning. In the supervised learning approach, we have to tell the computer what we are actually looking out for in the data. Um, for example, if you're trying to predict stock prices, you're, you're training the computer with data on how to know when the stock price is going up or when it's going down. But in unsupervised learning, you do not tell the computer what to look out for. You simply feed in data into the computer and the computer is able to identify patterns. All this is all based on statistics and the um, statistics probability and the computer being able to find patterns, unique patterns in the data which you are feeding right into it. And so um, on the next slide is the Moodle platform, which is where we are actually getting the students data from. So Moodle is an online um, interactive learning platform where lecturers get to um, create courses, students get to um, take their assignments, participate in courses, um, take their quizzes and also get access to other resources on the Moodle platform. So using this Moodle platform, we are able to get data which we are using to build our model. And the, the first step in to um, use machine learning on this data from Moodle is to process the data which we are capturing from the student. And that involves um, removing personally identifying um, information mm -hmm from the data, it involves removing loss of missing values, which would not be relevant in the model we are trying to build. And it also involves putting the data in a structure that um, would be suitable for the algorithm to work on it. Algorithms work on numbers, it's just numbers. So if you put in data that contains text, um, text um, data, it wouldn't really be able to make sense of that data. So lots of things go into the data processing to ensure that the data is in the right um, format for building these uh, models. And the data we are processing is mostly numerical data, which contains various columns about how students are engaging with content on the Moodle platform. So we investigated last year's data for 103 students, which contains um, 67 columns of um, various um, models which the students are engaging with. And we also investigated 163,000 rows of um, log files data. And on the left-hand side of the screen, you can see some of the codes we used on Jupyter Notebook. So Jupyter Notebook is also an interactive tool which is used for data analysis and um, scientific computing based on the Python um, programming code. So we are able to use this Jupyter Notebook to clean the data put it in the right structure and run predictions on the data which we have. Now we've explored three different machine learning models. Um, one of them is the K-means clustering model. Um, 
The other one is the Bayesian model, also known as the Gaussian and Nistro, and we also explored the um, Bech model as well. In all these three models, the k means clustering model was the model which performed the best out of all the three, which given us accuracies of up to 90% when compared to the other two. And we are also able to identify that as early as the fifth week of an academic year, a student is, can be identified as being at risk or not. And also, true, sorry? Eddie, you just one minute left, I'm afraid. Okay. Oh, okay, okay, okay. <laughs> so maybe okay, if you so, could get to it, yeah. Okay. Yeah, okay. So what you can see actually on the numbers here is just a set of predictions. So it gives these predictions as numbers and we are able to make sense of those predictions in clusters, which are shown here. So there are three clusters which are identified, the at-risk cluster, the likely at-risk cluster and the not at-risk cluster. So this is just a brief preview of the chart generated shown here. And through this, we are able to um, fit the results into the Power BI visualization software, which gives us a more um, best eye view of what is going on with the students. So we can actually see the clusters here being visualized as a pie chart. We can see how the students are engaging by the date. We can also see the level of interactions with the grid for each student. And on the next slide, this is a visualization of the logs file data which we have. We're able to know the days of the week which the students are engaging mostly on the platform. We're able to look at the months where they are most active. And we're also able to see what period of time um, during the day that the students are actually engaging with the platform. So all this information, actually, we can drill down this information to the students we can draw this information to the students at risk. We can draw this information to the students that have been like being predicted as being likely at risk. And with getting this best eye view of what is going on with the student actually helps us to make more um, informed decisions on the steps we need to take to help optimize the learning experience for students. It also um, helps the lecturers as well at um, GMIT to know the right intervention steps they need to take to ensure to, to find out um, the reasons why a student is not engaging as much as they should, and then see what we can do to help those students out. So that is um, generally how we are applying machine learning to learning analytics at GMIT. Thank you very much for listening. That is super, Ige. Thank you so much for that presentation. Um, I just, I'm not sure if there's, I don't see any messages at the moment. Perhaps anyone would like to turn on their mic if they had a quick question for Ike. I was just going to ask a quick question about, have you tried the Moodle learning analytics and to, to do some stuff within it rather than just taking some of the data outside of Moodle? Um, not really, though, because we are still like, um, experimenting with this uh, at this stage. We've not really tried on the Moodle platform itself. We're still experimenting outside of the Moodle platform. Yeah. Gavin, have you used it much? Just uh, like I know we started trying to train models there last year using the learning analytics mode and it, it didn't work great for us, to be honest. Did, have you used it yourself, Gavin? Uh, tried. To be quite honest, I don't know anyone who used it. Um, that's, I suppose, the the, the safe way to put it. I think most people have done, as in this presentation, where they take the data and analyze it ex externally with other data, like the, for example, Leaving Cert's math score has a great indicator when coupled with Moodle activity data and performance in sort of prediction. But within Moodle, it just doesn't have all of the relevant data. So, yeah. you, need, so you need to pull it in with their profiles and whatever and activities outside of the LMS as well. So yeah. 